Welcome agents, a couple of bits of info to bring in today's video. It won't be a long one today because I'm waiting on the news about the next state of the game and confirmation of when we might be getting title update 6 and episode 2. With that said, have the developers accidentally or on purpose added an impossible piece of gear to the game which indicates a possible change for loot 2.0. Let's take a look. If you enjoy this one, a like and a comment would be very much appreciated. Subscribe for dedicated Division 2 content and let's go. Alright, so I wouldn't normally make a video talking about the vendor reset, just because other channels cover it a lot earlier than I could, and I personally found the uh, vendor resets from the Division 2 a lot less exciting than they were in the Division 1 and not really worth watching. However, there are two things I want to talk about today from the vendors and both for different reasons. Firstly, and the most important, I think. At the DZ West vendor, you can get an impossible piece of gear. Now, this isn't clickbait or it's nothing like that. For real, you can actually go there and you can buy a piece of gear that until this vendor has not been in the game. Now, I don't know if it's somewhat sort of broke in the latest patch or the maintenance that was on Friday or all the devs are trying somewhat different for Loot 2.0, but you can actually go and buy a salvaged Wyvern Wear holster with two utility attributes the hard-hitting talent, and an offensive mod slot. Now, this is not meant to be possible. Only the um, didactile version, I think that's how you say it, can roll a talent, but this would only actually let you roll with one attribute slot, either an offensive one or a utility one. Now, on screen is a spreadsheet and a breakdown of all the rolls you can get on gear. As you can see, the salvaged Wyvern Wear holster can roll with, it, with either a offensive or utility in the first attribute slot, then an offensive, defensive, or utility in the second. This holster should then not roll with any talent at all, but does roll with, with one offensive mod slot. Now, like I said, I don't know if the devs are trying something here uh, for Loot 2.0, but if they are, what could it be? Now, before the Division 2 launched, I made a lot of speculation videos, uh, with quite a bit of it actually being true in the end. So, let's just quickly speculate and elaborate on this. What, why would the developers allow this holster to roll in every slot, i.e. Uh, both attribute slots, talent and the mod slot? Is it possible that the devs are going to remove all the different variations of gear and instead have one type of brand for each gear piece, meaning each piece could roll in you know all slots that, that are available? That's what's actually coming to my mind here. That's what I thought when I, when I first saw this uh, and that excites me quite a bit if you think about it uh, it's entirely possible and some of the devs have confirmed on stream as being something they'd like to see where they remove you know all the other different variations of gear i also think this is something i know the community wants as well um only having one type of brand for each gear um, drastically reduces the overall rng and if this piece of gear is a test it means that each piece of or each brand can actually roll in every slot. I really, I really hope, I really hope this is true. And I think this would uh, be pushing the loot and the RNG in the right direction. I think we should all keep our eye out on things like this from now on, as this could be a clue to somewhat coming with uh, TU6. For me, I'm going to be specifically looking for brands of gear that's not currently in the game, like Alp Summit Mask, for example, because I think in TU6, all gear will be available across all gear slots, and then you'll be able to actually roll across every different, you know, you could have two attribute slots, you can have a talent slot, and you can have an offensive slot, and there's no variations, it, you can just get everything. Anyway, it's either a, a clever little indicator by the devs, or some that went wrong, and my speculation is basically right out of the window, but regardless, it wouldn't surprise me if the changes mentioned here that you know I've just talked about did happen anyway. And, and I actually think they'd be really welcome. I'd actually like to hear you guys' thoughts on that. I, I know for sure that everyone hates that there's about a million different variations of each piece of gear. Whether people like the idea of actually uh, like having everything roll, i.e. you could have two uh, attribute slots, you could have you know a, a talent slot, and you can also have um, a mod slot... I don't know, but it would be nice to hear what you guys think, so please just leave it down in, in the comments below. Okay, the next one I want to briefly talk about is the 42% damage to elites mask found at the DZ South vendor. So I saw a few videos posted on this. I saw that Hamish Bode said he you know he needed this, this was an upgrade for his build. And to be honest, guys, it kind of made me laugh a little bit, to be honest, because this role epitomizes why the devs are working on the loop for the next update and why they need to get it right. Now, if you do need this, then, you know, go there and get it, but it's a problem. A 42% damage to elite mask is a very, very good roll to find at a vendor, 
and in the world actually, which is where the problem is because this is nowhere near the max roll. The max roll for damage to elites on a high-end mask is 51% and a very good roll is classed as 44%. So why is everyone raving about a mask of 42% and why is this an upgrade for a lot of people? Well, you know, that just shows how bad the RNG has become where as a community, we're glorifying an attribute roll that is more than 10% lower than the max roll in game. Now at this point, in the you know in the game it's some five months after launch this this sort of role should only really be good for people still working their way up to end game not for players at the end game already now i don't want to ramble on about this too much because i think you all get my point uh, we should not as a community get excited over a damage to elite mask with only 42 percent but we do because the rng is so horrible uh this role is actually considered very good because of that now i implore the devs to look at this and consider the changes that have been proposed uh, before by myself and others, which are, you know, you tighten up these stat ranges and you tie the, those ranges to the gear score, i.e. if you have a 500 gear score piece of gear, it should roll, for example, 48 to 51%, okay, for damage to elites on a mask. Uh, if you've got 490 to, say, 499 gear score, it should be 42% to 47%, and then 450 to 489 gear score, maybe 35% to 41% and so on and, and so forth. You, you get the picture. Now, please please do something like this. Uh, and if you are, then gear score 500. I don't think as well, I don't think the vendor should sell any gear lower than 500 if you're at 500 gear score. If Even if you're not wearing the 500 gear score stuff, which at the moment a lot of people aren't, but you've, you know, you've got it. Because in Destiny, for example, you don't have to wear uh, the highest gear stuff. The game automatically knows what stuff you've got on you. And it basically calculates that and uses an average. And I'm not sure if the Division 2 does that. But if it doesn't, it needs to. And if it does, then and you're at 500 gear score, then I don't think the vendor should be dropping anything lower than 500 gear score. And then, you know, as I said before, that would then determine that the stat range is on, on those particular pieces of gear. Anyway, like I said, I know I've rambled on about this, but it just made me laugh that I've seen, you know, videos and people saying, you know, this is a great role. And even like Hamish Bode, which I imagine he probably plays the game a lot, you know, he's definitely at endgame. I've seen some of his streams, so he's definitely at endgame. But getting excited over 42% damage to Elite's mask, even I'm excited about that because I don't think I have a role that high. And that's saying a lot. That is saying summer, five, five months after launch and, and people are, are not up to the 51% or 50% or even 49% range because it just doesn't drop anywhere because the RNG is as bad as it is. But this is why Loop, Loop 2.0 and RNG are so important for TU6. And this is a very good example of it. Uh, we shouldn't accept this at the end of the day. We shouldn't be happy about this sort of role. This is some of that needs to be changed with TU6. And I hope it does. Lastly, on Friday, we had a maintenance, which is worth me going over in this video. The patch notes are as follows. Added a fix that should improve issues with audio degradation, audio cutting out, and audio distortion. Fixed an issue where Razorback would not count as destroyed when defeated in Operation Dark Hours. Fixed an issue that could reset raid progression when the raid leader left the group. Fixed several collectibles showing up on the map, even if the players had already collected them. And fixed an issue which prevented Year 1 Pass owners from accessing further classified assignments when completing now some fear to hostages while in a group now how many of you are still experiencing audio issues i just want you to let me know down in the comments below the devs did confirm that this maintenance would not fix everything i believe and it's likely they are still going to be working on the audio issues because i've seen reports that the issues are still there for some people personally the maintenance seems to have done actually a good job at my end at least uh, it's not perfect. I've still had a few issues here and there, but generally before this maintenance I was having some serious issues of audio and all that sort of stuff um, And it seems to have been a lot better Whether it gets worse over time. I don't know yet, but I would hope that this fix has, has stopped that we'll have to wait and see So yeah, I just thought I'd add that in at the end of the video guys because you know I know a lot of you guys don't follow the, the patch notes and As a, a content creator for the game. I feel like it's my job to actually do that so there you go. So there you go, agents. Hopefully you did enjoy this video. Like I said, have we seen our first glimpse at Loot 2.0? I hope so. I hope this is uh, this is what we're going to be getting. I really hope we're going to be getting one piece of gear or one piece of type of gear for each brand, and we can roll on each individual thing. You know, we could get we can get two attributes for every piece of gear, one talent, and you get one slot. 
I want you guys to let me know what you think about that because I, I'm not sure if that, that particular part's controversial. I know that everyone wants every piece of gear to be available um, you know, across the board and everyone wants all the different variations to be removed because I know that ultimately that will reduce the RNG massively. But I don't know whether people like the idea of you know, it guaranteeing two attributes, one talent and also one slot. Uh, I don't know what people think about that. So it would be nice to actually you guys just to get involved, leave your comments down below and let me know what you think. But anyway, like I said, I've rambled on. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, please just drop a like on the video. It does help me out. If you did stay around to the end, very, very much appreciate you staying around to the end. You do not know how much it actually helps me out. With that said, it's bank holiday tomorrow. I'm making this on a Sunday. It's coming out on a Sunday. I hope you're all having a fantastic weekend in the UK. It's absolutely uh, sweating and I've been doing the garden. So... <laughs> Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Until the next one, epic out.